This is Brilliant 2, a Kelly Peterson 44 built in 1978. This is us, the Smallwoods. Julian and I have owned Brilliant 2 since 2005. We bought her in Thailand and sailed her back to Australia. They say all boats leak and Brilliant 2 was a good example of what can happen when water comes into a boat over many, many years. Although structurally sound, there was a lot of damaged timber and delaminating veneer. It was time to give our beloved boat an internal refit. There's a lot of this sort of stuff. So basically it's all just, you can see it's just falling apart. And then this is all, this is all sort of, um, uh, what do they call it, cosmetic. Um, this is all uh, solid timber, so that's all just looking a bit ropey there. We've got more water damage there. These are the sorts of things that we were dealing with. we'd start from the top and we'd work our way down so on a boat absolutely everything is connected to something else so just because you're working on the interior doesn't mean that it's not necessarily connected to something on the outside so we started from this hatch which has um, an outside component as well so we stripped all of the teak on that and revarnished it and then above my head we've got all this headlining. This is what the old headliner looks like. It's just this nasty old foam bat, just disintegrating stuff here. So it was here and obviously up above our heads. And what we're doing is, of course, we're ripping it off and we're replacing it with this beautiful stuff up here, which we've got one piece in now. This is gonna be one of the last things we end up putting back in, I think, once we've, once we've got to that stage, we're home and hosed.
so basically we ripped all of that headlining out um there was a a funny little skylight here which i think initially might have been a a chimney for a stove or, or something um that's now been blocked in because we don't need it it's just been this funny little bit sitting there and um this is now going to be ready for us to put some new headlining in all these timbers we stripped back and then re-varnished with an interior varnish these pieces here were all completely uh, delaminated so they've been replaced with a laminix and what kind of varnish did you use on the um the interior varnish you said they'd been done with a satin interior what brand was that uh that was a hempel um interior so we had a, we had a few problems with that we did try one brand uh, that said it was satin and it came up gloss and we really wanted satin because that's what we've done in the in the um in the v-birth and it just looks really nice it's a little bit more modern than that old-fashioned high gloss So this is the top layer of plywood, which is only about four millimeters thick, three millimeters thick, just a dressing plywood. And that had delaminated from the actual plywood core, which is about um, 10 mil thick, 12, no, it's about half an inch thick, the actual plywood core. There's nothing wrong with the structural plywood, but the, um, the dress piece had separated, had delaminated from here. So an easy fix, which does work, is to um, just drill lots of holes through the through the um, three millimeter, four millimeter plywood, and uh, you're just just using um, aerodite that comes in a, its own pre-mixing tubes. You just squirt it in until it comes out. You squirt it in this hole till it comes out that hole. You squirt it in here till it comes out there, etc. All the way around. And now we've got a, a solid um, join between the outer ply and the inner ply without having to rip the whole thing off and build a new piece. So it's a quick and easy trick. Julian did all these port lights, which I'm sure at some stage you'll be able to show how you did that. So they were, they'd gone to this sort of dull green, green color and um, Julian polished them all up, lacquered them. There's a piece here that will have to be remade and there's a, it's sort of trimmed either side, just like this. So that's a work in progress. All of this woodwork here, we've stripped it all back, sanded it to 320 grade. All of the drawers, all the holes you see, are um, all drawers or um, cupboards with doors attached. And they've all gone home and they've been part of a little production line at home that we've stripped back and, and sanded. So meanwhile, back at the ranch, 
we've got all this timber that's come off the boat, which is in a bit of a production line. So we've got these drawers here from underneath the nav station, these drawers here that are part of the galley setup, these drawers here which go underneath the sofas, we've got one of the head doors, we've got shelves, we've got cupboard doors, we've got more cupboard doors, more cupboard doors, it's endless. This, my friends, is how to spend a summer's day in Australia. Safety glasses. And here we go. All the veneer, um, 42 year old veneer, was all peeling and discoloured and uh, basically looks like, basically it looked like this. I've used this for mixing some glue on, but this is the old veneer which is which just fell out. This is what was in here. And um, so we've taken it out all these doors and uh, we're making up new new inserts out of um, teak veneer plywood, which I got from Brisbane. And so the way we do that is we get our door that's had the old um, veneer cleaned out of it. by stapling strips of, I've already done this one, this is one I prepared earlier, and um, you don't measure it because measure, measuring you can just be out by half a mil and it shows up like proverbial dog's balls. So this, um, as you can see, this is a perfect fit in here. We've got our template. Okay, so this is the locker door. The drain has to run vertical like everything else in the boat. So we make sure that I just mark the grain direction on the pattern. That X marks the bottom of the of the piece that I'm going to cut out. Take this over here to our, our veneered plywood, which is um, just veneered on the inside. So I've got the back of my sheet marked here. It's pretty obvious, but just to keep reminding me. Uh, the grain runs that way, so we've got to put our pattern on here upside down because we're cutting from the back of the sheet. And we've got one good edge here, which I've cleaned up. I know is a very good edge, so I line my pattern up to that one edge. I just, um, I don't use that edge that I've cut because it might not be um, dead accurate. So I just cut about half an inch in. Now I line up the edge of my pattern with my ruler. Welders clamp, Weld up. line up this edge, clamp it, check this edge again, it's slightly out, there we go. Alright, now I can mark. I try to draw that line looking down right on the right where I stapled the the pieces of plywood into the door to make the pattern. The more accurate this line is the more accurate it's going to turn out and the less sanding you'll have to do. So what blades are you using? So these blades and they didn't have them years ago but um, they're, uh, they're from Bunnings they're a clean cut ultimate laminate and they are they're really good they they there's minimal chipping from them and they have a very fine tooth but the uh it's designed to to chip very little um well, i'm looking forward to trying them on the on the laminex actually they should be quite good edge there where we've just cut you can see that there's no chipping whatsoever which is just what we want so this is just rough this is just with the jigsaw cut so 
it shouldn't drop in, but I don't want it to. It should almost drop in. And then I just fine, fine sand it. Look at that, it's almost going in. It's just a fraction of a mil um, to uh, get it fitted. after our little Christmas break at home and working on all the bits of wood that have come out of everywhere. And this is where we're up to basically. It's the last stages of the, of the demolition. So um, as you can see from everything we've done, we've stripped off all the damaged veneer from the um, saloon. So it's all gone from uh, all these places here, sanded back. The timbers um, have been sanded back. We even did what we call the Hobbit Hole, which is um, the little corridor back to the uh, aft cabin. The aft cabin door is taped firmly shut. We will not be going in there on this project. This is all from there forward. Um, we did the galley as well. So that's all been, uh, same thing, all the veneers are out, all the timbers are um, sanded back to 320 grit. Now where we're up to is just the final bits that tie in in the V-berth. So the V-berth was done up to basically the lip of the of the bunk of the bed. Um, and then um, so from anything from here um, aft, we've just got to tie in with what we've done. So the scraping has begun. So this is scraping back um, the remaining irremovable timbers and um, just round here um, all the delaminating um, veneer has come off as well and the floor we originally weren't going to do the floor um, it was we just weren't going to the sole the sole the cabin sole um, 
but you know we've come this far and when you come this far and done this much and it's kind of just not worth not doing it now so onwards of a saga um, we decided that we would do the floor which wasn't previously on the cards but if you've come this far then um, why not I suppose was our thinking so it's a holly antique floor and I'm actually standing on the finished sanded product with socks on um, which I never thought I would live to see the day um, when we what, started socks? no doing the Anyway, um, I never thought I'd live to see the day with it looking like this because uh, it was pretty bad when we first started. So I started off going with the Roop sander with 40 grit sandpaper on it and nothing was making a difference. It took me six hours to do a third of the boat and it didn't even look any good. Um, I started in what we call the Hobbit Hole. Uh, which is the little tunnel connecting the saloon to the beaver and that was, sorry, to the uh, cabin. That was really soul destroying because it turned out there'd been some kind of diesel leak there um, a long time ago and everything was just yeah, not salvageable. So we've decided we'll find an alternative for that but we pressed on with the rest of the floor. I did suggest using the belt sander which Jim didn't want to do at first but then came to the realisation it was the only way and ta-da! So um, Sharon's already told you what happened with trying to get the 
floor into some kind of decent condition with the orbital sander, which didn't work. So made the um, made the decision to go with the uh, belt sander. So I started off with 36 grit and worked on um, just getting the surface layer off and going down to something where I could, you know, most of the dents, etc., would, would um, disappear. Obviously, we've taken all the all the uh, old varnish off. Um, after the 36, we went to 80 grit with the belt sander again, went over the whole thing, and then um, went to 120 with the orbital, and um, that got rid of most of the little dings, etc. When you're doing orbital sanding, you do end up with the odd mistake where you've let it rest for one second and it digs in, so I had to get rid of those with the orbital. And then um, we did the 240 grit orbital again, and um, this this is the result. So it doesn't look like much now, but when we put some varnish on there, it'll enhance all of this and hopefully come up pretty good. One thing we do have to do is where these pulls fit in here. Um, I've taken off in some places about a millimeter of, of wood. Um, these this this planking is actually about nine millimeters thick now, so we've got plenty there. But what it means is that I have to get in here and I have to chisel out these rebates again so that the uh, when we put the, the uh, stainless steel pulls back in there um, they'll be flush again so I'll be doing that before the varnish goes on I think that's today's difficult job and we're just about to have a massive clean up aren't we yeah get rid of the plastic and the dust yeah get it all ready for the first coat of varnish hopefully tomorrow this my friends is where we leave things for now but if you want to stay up to date with our progress, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Sailing Adventures of Brilliant 2.